Hello everyone and welcome to step two of Lakeview Growth Track. Today we're going to be discovering our design. So step two is all about discovering your design and how we're going to do that is uh, through two assessments. We're going to do a personality assessment and we're also going to do a spiritual gifts assessment. But before we do that, um, my name's David and this is my wife Barbie and we serve here on the uh, uh, volunteer staff here at Lakeview and uh, we're going to be your host today mm -hmm. and let's start on page 31 at the, at the top we're going to look at discovering our gifts in Ephesians chapter 4 verses 11 and 12 it says now these are the gifts Christ gave to the church the apostles the prophets the evangelists and the pastors and the teachers their responsibility is to equip God's people to do his work and build up the church, the body of Christ. So according to Ephesians chapter 4, we have a gift. We have been gifted by God to do His work. It's, it's um, that word gift in the original is the word charis, which is where we get our word charismatic. And uh, you may be thinking, well, I don't want to be a charismatic. But really, a charismatic is really just a person who knows their gifts. So it's important that you know how you've been gifted by God so you can participate in the ministry that uh, God has gifted you for. Right. Um, now, when we say gifts, um, we're, we're talking about something that God has gifted you with. It's like a divine enablement. Mm -hmm. um, it's something that you're enabled to do by God. Uh, and some things are going to happen when that when when you uh, discover what those are. When you're in those, when you're doing those things, uh, number one, they become easy to you. They're easy for you. Um, and it another thing is is it touches lives. Hi. It touches the lives that you're you're speaking to or speaking into, and it's also fulfilling to you. Yes. So uh, all these things come with knowing what your gifts are. So it's important to know what your gifts are. Right. Do you want to say something about that, Barbie? No, I mean, there's lots of, we're, we're, it's exciting to get in here and start looking and seeing and discovering what your gifts and passions are. And uh, I can't wait till we start doing the assessment and you're gonna, you may be surprised in what you have been gifted in and, uh, but God is gonna, he's gonna reveal it to you. So I think it, I'm looking forward to it with you. Okay. Uh, before we do these assessments, there's, there's three things I want you to think about as you go through these. Number one, and it, on page 31, number one, I want you to think about uh, my gifts, but I also want to add this word passions. I want you to think about your gifts and your passions. In Romans chapter 12, verses 6 through 8, it says, we have different gifts according to the grace given us. Mm -hmm. If a man's gift is prophesying, let him use it in proportion to his faith. If it is serving, let him serve. If it is teaching, let him teach. If it is encouraging, let him encourage. If it is contributing to the needs of others, let him give generously. If it is leadership, let him govern diligently. If it is showing mercy, let him do it cheerfully. So here in Romans chapter 12, it talks about all these different gifts and um, so it's important not only that you know what your gift is, but uh, you're, you're, you're involved in something that you're passionate about. Right. Uh, you want to speak on the importance of that? Yes, passion is, when you are doing something with passion, you, you don't have to be told to do it. You don't have to be uh, encouraged to be there on time. Uh, you have a desire to be there. You'll be the first one there. You'll be prepared and you'll be excited when you're working in your passion. One thing when I was studying this today, uh, if when you look at the scripture that he gives, notice that he says, if a man's gift is, let him use it. If he is serving, let him serve. If it is, you're not only being, not only are you going to be revealed, is it going to be revealed to you what your gift is, but you've got to do it, right? It's not just us finding out what your gift is, but you got to get up 
and get in working in that gift. I love that on every one of those. If it is whatever, then let him. And then it even gives you, tells you how to do it. Uh, you know, like if you're giving, give generously. Uh, if you're encouraging, let encur encourage. But if you're contributing to the needs of others, let him do it generously. So it also tells you how to do it. So I, that's exciting to me too. But passions, man, there's nothing like it when you're working in your passion. I love that. Okay, that's good. So when you're doing these assessments, I want you to think about your gifts and passions. But the second thing I want you to think about is your life experiences. Right. Um, in Romans chapter 12, verse 1, it says, See, so here's what I want you to do. God helping you take your everyday, ordinary life, your sleeping, eating, going to work, and walking around life, and place it before God as an offering. Embracing what God does for you is the best thing you can do for Him. So you've had experiences in your life, um, and um, God wants you to use those experiences. Right. He's, he's brought you through those experiences for a reason. Right. Because he had intended for you to use those experiences later on in ministry. Do you want to touch on that? Yeah. Bit? You really need to use your life experiences. I know many times we maybe don't make good decisions. Uh, things happen to us, and we say, you know, I don't want to talk about that. Uh, but we need to use those things have formed us right and made us the pe the person that we are and we can tell others you know this is this is what happened this is where i maybe missed it uh and i believe god's works all things right for our good and he he can take those mistakes and those uh, bad decisions we made or maybe they're just good things too and he can work them to be able to minister to others so yeah life experiences Sometimes we question, God, why am I having to go through this? And God doesn't waste anything. And so he can use everything that happens to us to uh, benefit ourselves and to benefit others. Right. That's good. Uh, and one thing I want to say here, everyone can be used. Mm -hmm. Don't think that uh, you can't be used right. by God. God has gifted you. Uh, he has given you... Um, uh, certain abilities and talents that he wants you to use in ministry. Right. So everyone can be used. Right. It doesn't matter whether you think you can be used or not, you can be used. Mm -hmm. Now, the third thing I want you to think about, I want you to think about your gifts and passions. I want you to think about your life experiences. Right. But I also want you to think about, and Barbie kind of touched on this a little bit, is about maybe some of the uh, areas in your life that you're not proud of. Uh, Number three is my pain, mm -hmm. my pain. Maybe I've gone through some things that I'm not, uh, like I said, I'm not proud of. Uh, I um, maybe have made some mistakes. I have some baggage, yeah. you know, as people like to say. Mm -hmm. uh, you can show me my, my, um, my gifts and my passions or my, uh, uh, reveal my personality, but I've got baggage. I've got things that I'm not proud of. I've, I've gone through things that um, that have been painful in yeah. my life. Yeah. And so it's important to realize that God can use even the pain that you've gone through to minister to others. Mm -hmm. Those pe those others that you're ministering to may have gone through the same thing that you went through. So it's important for them to talk to someone who's been there. Right. You know. Right. They don't want to talk to somebody who hasn't been there, who hasn't experienced it. You want to touch on that? Yeah, and it's exactly like that in the in the scripture. So God is our Father, and He's the source of all comfort, right? And so He comforts us in all our trouble. This is a great scripture. So that we, so now we get to uh, become involved so that we can relate to them because we've already been there. Nothing like somebody's already been through something you've what you're walking through so that we can relate to them and we can comfort others in their trouble and and we'll be able to give them that same comfort that God gave us isn't that great and so pain and untold pain in, in millions of people and yet God says I'll take all here we go back again I'll take all things and work them for the good right to those that are called to those that love me 
And so he never wasted anything. So yeah, pain, we have to relate to that too. Yeah, that scripture that Barbie was referring to is 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 3 and 4, found at the bottom of page 31. Uh, so those three things I want you to think about as you're going through these two assessments. First, we're going to go through a personality assessment. Then we're going to go through a spiritual gifts assessment. But the three things I want you to think about are gifts and passions, uh, your life experiences, and also even the painful, th painful things that you've gone through in your life. Right. God can use them all. So let's turn to page 32. And in big, bold letters there in the middle of the page, it says, Design Reveals Destiny. So if you want to know where you're going, just look at how you're designed. Mm -hmm. Look good. at how God has designed you. Right. Uh, that'll, that'll tell you a lot about where God wants you to go, where God wants you to be. In Psalm, verse, in Psalm 139, verses 13 and 14, it says, You made... Speaking of God, you made all the delicate delicate inner parts of my body and knit me together in my mother's womb. Mm -hmm. Thank you for making me so wonderfully complex. Your workmanship is marvelous, how well I know it. So here this scripture talks about how God uh, meticulously uh, uh, put us together. Right. Uh, he, he, he made all the, the delicate inner parts Probably. of our bodies. He knit us together in our mother's womb. So he had a plan for us even before we were born. Yes, that's right. Uh, he had, a, he had a, an idea of what he wanted us to accomplish in this life. Right. Um, and, um, you know, the sad thing about this scripture, though, that last phrase there says, how well I know it. A lot of people can't say that mm -hmm. because they don't know it. Mm -hmm. They don't know how God has designed them, how God has uh, made them. Do you want to speak on that a little bit? Right. They uh, there's probably untold. I don't know. Untold thousands. We'll just say that. But people who have sat on the church pew and never knew what they were designed for. That's the saddest thing, and uh, they never probably felt fulfilled. And so we don't want that. We want you to know exactly, uh, our, and God will show you uh, through these assessments what, what he's called you to do. And then you'll get to start to fulfill in that design. Uh, one thing I want to say, too, is when we talk about design reveals destiny, destiny could include your gifts, what does include your gifts, your personality, and the opportunities that God gives you. Those three things are your destiny. So we're working on gifts, especially, and your personality tonight. So, yeah, it's going to be good. Okay. Let's go back to page 32. We want to fill in those blanks there. Number one, uh, what we're going to do today, we're going to discover my gifts. Mm -hmm. We're going to discover our gifts through right. these assessments that we're going to go through. We're going to discover our gifts. And then step three of Lakeview's growth track, uh, we're going to develop those gifts. Right. So just like Barbie said, uh, just knowing what your gifts are, that's not good enough. You need to develop those gifts. Right. And eventually, the, the next step, and we cover this in step four of the growth track, we want to use our gifts. Right. So number one, we want to discover our gifts, and we'll do that today. Uh, in step two of the growth track. Number two is we want to develop our gifts, and we'll do that in step three of the growth track. And then number three is we want to use our gifts. That's where we want to be eventually. That's where real joy is, mm -hmm. when we're using our gifts right. that God has gifted us with to minister to others. Uh, we're living our lives in such a way that it impacts others in a positive way. Right. That brings joy. Uh, that that's real fulfillment. Right. So that's right. There's one other thing I want to mention before we get into the assessments. It's, on page, it's at the bottom of page 32, and it's um, you. You may be wondering what is my purpose. Well, you, everybody can say this. I believe my purpose is to serve God. That first blank is serve God. Right. By serving Sorry. others. Yes. My purpose in life is to serve God, is to take the, my gifts and talents, my giftings that God has given me, uh, uh, 
take those gifts and serve others. Mm-hmm. Um, so my purpose is to serve God by serving others, using those gifts that God has given me. Amen? That's right. Okay. Let's turn to page 33 and we'll begin the first assessment. This is our personality assessment. And what I want you to do is there's a series of statements here. I think there's there's five statements in each section. There's four different sections. So there's a, a total of about 20 statements that you need to read through. Right. And give yourself a grade or based on how you see yourself. Um, one uh, would be never. Let me, these, two is rarely, three is sometimes, four is often, and five is always. Mm-hmm. So if you read the statement and you think, well, uh, that's always me, that's, that, that, that describes me to a T, then you would give yourself a five. If not, if that's not you at all, then you would give yourself a one. If it's somewhere in between those, t- you know, try to try to uh, stay away from the sometimes answer if you can, uh, and that'll uh, be a little bit better assessment if you do that. Right. But uh, let me let me read through the first one as an example. The first statement says, "I am assertive, demanding." and decisive. I am assertive, demanding, and decisive. So how do you think about yourself when you when you read that statement? Is that does, does that describe who you are? Or does that not describe you at all? Uh, so so just read through each one of those statements. And some of these statements kind of overlap. You'll notice that first statement there it says the second statement actually begins on line one. It says, I enjoy doing multiple tasks at once. Right. That's the second statement. But go through each statement, read through them all. Don't take a lot of time. Right. When you're going through these, when you're going through these assessments, I want you, to, um, want you to be consistent. I want you to be honest. You know, you need to be honest. Right. You don't want to answer them based on how you, you want to be but how you see yourself, how you really are. Really are, yeah. Um, so be consistent, be honest, and, and also be quick. Right. Don't spend a lot of time thinking about it. Just kind of go with your first gut instinct. Right. You want to mention, say anything about that? Well, I'm just, when you read the first one, I'm assertive, demanding, and decisive. Ooh, that sounds bad. I'm thinking I'm going to mark. <laughs> I'm going to mark never. <laughs> So, but don't do that because there are occasions when you may be. So just be honest like David said and be quick. If you think about it too much, that's what you'll start doing. Uh, so just do it. Whatever comes to your, they say sometimes your gut first. So I, that's what you need to do. Okay, so take a few minutes. Don't take a long long time, like I said. Be quick about it. Kind of kind of go with your first instinct and read through these uh, 20 statements. Go ahead and pause the video now and read through those and give yourself a grade on each one and then we'll come back and I'll give you more instructions on what you need to do right. on the assessment. Right. Okay, welcome back and uh, hopefully you've gone through each one of these statements and you've given yourself a grade. Uh, what I want you to do now on page 33 is you need to give yourself a total for each one of these sections. Like number one, my total was 12. I scored myself one, one, three, three, and four. So that totals up to 12. So just total up the first, your, your, what you circled on the first five statements. Right. Just total those numbers up and give yourself a total for each section. Mm-hmm. Do that for each one of the sections. Um, and that'll take you a few minutes. But uh, number one, I want to tell you what letters to put in these little squares beside the numbers. There's some squares. You see those squares? Uh, number one is the letter D. Right. Number two is the letter I. Number three is the letter S. And number four is the letter C. So it's D, I, S, and C. Now, uh, once you get your totals, um, what I want you to do is look at your two highest 
scores. Look at your highest score and also your second highest score. And that's going to be your personality leadership style. Right. Those two letters. Uh, mine is C slash S. You want to write that up in the upper right hand corner of page 33. Right. Um, whatever those two letters are. Um, like I said, mine is C and S. Barbie's was I S. Mm -hmm. And um, so let's turn to page 34. And I just want to briefly touch on this little diagram here. Right. Here's the letters D, I, S, C. And if you scored highest on D and I, or if you're a D, I personality, then that you want to write up at the top there. See the arrows pointing up? You want to write extrovert. Right. That means you're an extrovert uh, if you're a D, I personality. Now, if you're an I, S, like Barbie, she's an I, S. Mm -hmm. Uh, she's a people person. So right. write, you want to write people on the on the right hand side of that diagram. Mm -hmm. The word people. Now on the bottom, uh, CS, which is what I am. I'm a CS. Uh, that makes me an introvert. Introvert. And then DC would be your last last one. Uh, and you want to write the word task. T A S. K right. task. So you're you're more of a task. You're more right. you're more task oriented than you are peop a people person. Right. Basically. Uh, so um, in a, in Psalms one thirty nine fourteen it says, "I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well." And we, we read that earlier, but. Uh, it's kind of emphasis on now that you know what your personality uh, style is, uh, I think it makes it easier to minister. Okay. The real a real enemy of uh, that sometimes our enemy uses is comparison. You know, we, we compare ourselves to other people. Oh, I wish I could do that. I wish I could do this. I wish I could do that. But we don't want to go into comparison. It does nothing but frustrate you. But when you know how God made you uh, and you start flowing in that, it's so much better. And I want to say, too, when you're in between extrovert and people, you're really, when you're a people, a people person, you're influential. That, that's uh, uh, that's something that you are. You're influential with people. When you're between people and introvert, you're steady. You're in, and when you're between task and an introvert, you're competent. And when you're between task and extrovert, you're really direct. So with David, he is awesome. He is truly a task. I mean, every I, every T, daughter, he's into the task, and he wants the task done correctly, and he's very competent, and that that's that comes through in his uh, giftings. So remember those things too. Uh, we're as opposite as you can get <laughs> in a lot of ways, but that's why it works. So uh, when you get to flowing in this, you can praise God. You know what, God. I'm working in this, I'm flowing in this, and I just wanted to tell you your words are wonderful, and he will use them to his glory. Also, I want to mention this uh, before we move on. On pages 35 through 38, uh, once you determine what your personality uh, leadership style is, you can read about it over yeah. here in, on these pages. Right, so It good. gives you a lot of information about, mm -hmm. about your style and and just see if that describes you. Like, um, I'm a CS, so right. let, let's read CS real quick. It says, we are systematic and stable. We tend to do one thing at a time and do it right. Reserved and cautious, we, we would rather work behind the scenes to stay on track. However, we seldom take risk or try new things and naturally dislike sudden changes in our environments. Precisionist to the letter, we painstakingly require accuracy and fear criticism, which we equate to failure. Diligent workers, our motivation comes from serving others. So 
That describes me to a T, doesn't it? To a T. That's him, exactly. So, uh, and then you, you, wherever you scored highest, you can read on. You can read about that also. Like I scored highest on C. You can. It's got information on that. It's got information on all the different personality, uh, leadership styles. So read through those. Right. And um, see if that doesn't describe who you are. Right. How God has designed you. Okay, let's turn to page 39. Um, once you've determined what your, your personality leadership style is, um, you know, every personality and leadership style has strengths and some of them and challenges also. Right. Uh, the following will give you specific areas to focus on to help you work well with others. So these are some of the things maybe you need to work on. Some These are some of the challenges that you might have based on your personality leadership style. Mm -hmm. um, I, I scored highest on, in the letter C. So C personalities are compliant on page 40. They're compliant, competent, task-oriented, goal-oriented, and introverted. As you embrace these strengths, also make sure to then it gives me some things I need to work on. Right. Uh, some challenges that I might have based on my personality. Uh, my personality. Right. The first thing it says here is I need to be decisive when necessary. I need to cultivate personal relationships. I need to be open to others' ideas and methods. I need to balance my focus between facts and people. I need to focus on doing the right things not just doing things right. I need to help others accomplish their goals, not just concentrate on my own personal goals. Right. But these are just some of the things, and you can read through those, uh, uh, and um, whichever one you really scored high on, you might want to read through those, read through that, that letter, and see that personality, right. and see maybe some of the challenges that you might have as a result. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's turn to page 41. And we're gonna, the next assessment is a spiritual gifts assessment. Um, in John chapter 14, verse 12, it says, Very truly I tell you, whoever believes in me will do the works I have been doing, and they will do even greater things than these because I am going to the Father. So Jesus said that. Um, once he goes to the Father, he's going to send a comforter. He's, he said he would send a comforter, uh, the Holy Spirit. So there's some spiritual gifts that you've been gifted with. Uh, and um, we're going to find out what those are. Mm -hmm. And uh, through this assessment, let me give you a little bit of instruction on the assessment. I'm beginning on page 42, there's a list of 72 statements on pages 42 and page 43. What I want you to do is read through each one of those statements, and again, like you did in the first assessment, give yourself a grade, either one, but this time it's either either one, two, or three. One is almost never, two is sometimes, and three is almost always. And again, we want to try to stay away from sometimes as much as possible. Try to, try to either say almost never or almost always, I know sometimes you have to say sometimes, but uh, uh, try to stay away from that if you can. Um, but the answer is the answer sheet is on page 44. So th what you want to do is you want to read through the statement. Let's l let's go back to page 42. And number one says, "I like organizing services and events." So in other words, do you like organizing things? <laughs> Are you an organizer? If you are, then you want to give yourself a three, mm -hmm. all, almost always. If you're not, or not at all an organized, you want to give yourself a one. And you do that on page 44. So you go to page 44, and where the number one is, you write down how you grade yourself, either one, two, or three. Right. And you do that for each one of these 72 statements. So what I want you to do, I want you to pause the video read through the 72 statements uh, one at a time. And again, 
I want you to be consistent, be honest, and be quick. Don't think, of, don't take a long amount of time to think about it. Just kind of go with your first instinct. And you might read some of these things, and I, I know I, I experienced this when I did the, the assessment. I never really considered any of the, some of these. Right. Uh, but uh, you want to touch on that? It's, well, and you may not have, uh, you might not even quite understand what it is that they're asking you. Uh, but, but yeah, just just mark what, like David said, one, two, or three. Make it quick, uh, and it will, it will reveal to you some things. Yeah, you might think, you might think, can I see myself doing this, or can right, I, uh, or this is not anything I would be interested in doing. Uh, you know, so. As you read the statements, just use that um, frame of mind. Right, uh, right. So anyway, go ahead and pause the video, read through the statements, give yourself a grade one, two, or three, and then we'll come back and I'll give you a little bit more instruction on how to finish up the assessment. Welcome back to uh, Lakeview Growth Track Step 2. Now that you've gone through the 72 statements on the spiritual gifts assessment and given yourself a grade, what I need you to do is turn to page 44 mm -hmm. where you listed the numbers for each one of the statements. And I want you to give yourself a total for each one of those rows. For example, number one, the top three, or the top row is number one, number 25, and number 49. Right. So you add those those numbers up that you gave yourself and give yourself a total for that row. Right. So mine was one, three, and two, so I got, I got a six on the first row. My second row was one, one, and two, so I got a four. So that's how I want you to go through each one of these, and it'll take you a few minutes to do that. Right. But once you do that and get, and get your totals, what I want you to do then is look at the top three or four totals. Some, some of these, the highest you can have on any row would be a nine. Right. That is if you gave yourself three on each one, each one of the statements. So the nine is the highest score you can get. So mm -hmm. if you get higher than a nine, then you've done something wrong. <laughs> <laughs> and, mm. Three would be the lowest score you could get on, on any row. Right. And um, that is if you gave yourself a one on each one of those questions. And uh, so anyway, you, what you want to do is take your, your top three or four scores. And each row, is there's a letter associated with each row. And each letter corresponds to a spiritual gift. Mm-hmm. Beginning on page 46, it talks about the spiritual gifts. Uh, it's letters A through A through X. It, yeah. it ends on page 50. Mm -hmm. A through X. So you could score high on any one of these letters. Right. Uh, so, but I want you to pick out the top three or four. And again, nine would be the highest score that you would receive on any of the gifts. Um, so once you've done that and determined what your three or four highest are, what you might want to do is go back to the where it talks about the gift, beginning on page 46, mm -hmm. and just circle, circle that letter. Right. Circle that letter. That'll just kind of remind you of what your gifts are, what your highest gifts are. and. Um, it tells you a little bit about that gift. Right. For example, the letter G is faith. The gift of faith is the divine strength or ability to believe in God for unseen supernatural results in every arena of life. And it gives some verses of scripture right. to support that. And it also gives you uh, some suggestions as to maybe what uh, team you might want to join based on the, that gifting that that God has gifted you with. Right. Um, do you want to speak on that? Right, so in faith, I mean, you can work, that has, you need faith to work in every uh, 
and every team and every ministry, I'll say, too, in, is it, you have to have the gift of faith. <laughs> uh, and so I love this because it really does, we do need scripture backing, right? So that gives it for every gift that they give you. And then it gives you a good idea about what ministry that you could be involved in. So I love that. That gives even more direction for us. And if you, in my opinion, this is my opinion, uh, nines uh, certainly should be marked. And you can put the gift, you can just check mark. That's what I did. I just check marked the ones I scored highest in. But I also marked eights. Uh, so uh, some people might not even got a nine in anything. So like David said, do your high score. So I marked the nines and the eights, and then I went back, and on the gift, I circled it. And, uh, and that'll give you a, if you did this honestly, it's going to give you a great idea about what your spiritual gifts are. Okay. Um, that pretty much concludes our step two of the growth track. We've gone through the, the uh, personality leadership assessment. And you, and you determine what your personality leadership style is. Right. And what the strengths and, and also some challenges of that personality style. Uh, you've also gone through the spiritual gifts assessment and determined what, how God has gifted you, uh, what spiritual gifts, and maybe um, it gives you a good idea of maybe what, again, design reveals destiny. Right. So you may be thinking about what team should I join or where should I get involved in 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 Lake in Lakeview Church. Uh, this will give you a good idea mm -hmm. of wh where uh, what area you might want to get involved in. And again, each each um, gift gives you a, um, a suggestion as to maybe which group you might want to get in get involved with. This. Right. So uh, you, you definitely want to after you now that we've completed step two we all we want to make sure we go to step three. Right. And uh, it talks about how to de it talks about developing our um, our um, gifts. Right. Developing our leadership. Leadership. Right. Which really is just influence. Right. When you get down to it, Lead when we say leadership, we're talking about influence. So um, now that we know what our gifts are, now that we've, uh, uh, it's important to develop those gifts, right? And then to use them uh, in God's kingdom, right? So that concludes our class for today. And um, do you have anything else you wanted to add? No, can't wait to see you come and join us. Yeah, thanks for joining us. We really appreciate it. Uh, and again, uh, design reveals your destiny. So thanks for joining us and discovering what your gifts are and what your personality leadership style is. And we'll see you later. Thanks for joining us. Bye. Bye.